Welcome to Garnet Reviews. We recently were invited back to Hawkins Yachts to review one of the listings that they have for sale. And as you can see from the photographs in the upcoming video, this is a stunning timeless classic. And this time we're reviewing a Hawkins Sportsman 76. For those of you that's new to Hawkins Yachts, I'd recommend watching the Hawkins Ortega video that we shot earlier, as this gives more of a history into the company itself. Um, but for this one, we're just going to dive right in and review the boat itself. This yacht measures in at 77 foot long. She's got a beam of just under 20 foot and a draft of approximately 5 foot. And she was first launched on October 31st, 1972. The boat was originally designed and built for a furniture manufacturer. So as you see from the video inside, all the attention to detail in the woodwork was very much of a priority to the original owner. And as such, this boat's been designed so that there's a, a luxury cruiser with liveaboard potential, offering three staterooms, including one large owner's aft stateroom. The yacht also boasts an 800 mile range, making it perfect for you to be able to head offshore and catch the larger fish, or you can take it to different places, to different tournaments. This is a Leslie Marie, but she was formerly known as the High Brass. It was very well known, not only in the east coast of Florida, but also on the Gulf Coast, and through in states including Alabama and Mississippi. Before jumping aboard, if I could just ask if you could please hit the subscribe button. We have more boat viewings lined up already, and we hope to bring more content to the channel for you very soon. The yeah, cockpit in this yacht is by far a sports fisherman's dream. As you can see here, there's plenty of space for tournament fishing, including a fish fighting chair on here, a rod holders in place all around the works and transom. And you can also see this on the handrails here, leading up into the main deck. The yeah, have cockpit has got mahogany handrails throughout. And the deck itself is teak. As this boat is equipped for offshore fishing, there is commercial grade ice maker on the aft quarter deck. And I really like the fact that there's nothing to get any of your ropes or lines tangled on. And if you look at the photographs here, you'll see that the main cleats, as well as water hoses and rod holders and things along those lines, are all neatly tucked away so that it's free of distraction. As we head down the side deck towards the bow, You'll see we've got a clear passage with a solid handrail, making you feel safe and secure regardless of weather. The cleats are located to the side so you don't trip on them. And things like fuel, water and waste filler caps, well, they're all flush mounted. And the dark tinted windows give it a great appearance on the outside, but it helps keep some of the sun rays out on the inside. The front deck is also where you'll find a life raft. And I've also got a deck crane as well for storing your tender aboard. And this is capable of lifting a thousand pounds, ideal for a small rib. Moving further forward, you'll see we've got seating areas at the very front. And these all offer storage underneath, making it the perfect location to keep ropes and fenders. And then the bow itself, you'll find a Lumar 5000 windlass on the pulpit with a delta anchor. And looking back aft, it's just a stunning view of this classic timeless design. Not to mention the two huge spotlights on the very top with the flybridge. And you'll also see the frontal radar with the unobstructed access. It's only a few short steps from the main deck up to the flybridge. And this is a first for me. The flybridge actually has two helm positions. It's got an aft helm position. One of the main purpose of this is so that the skipper's got a clear view of the aft cockpit and the fishing activities that's taking place. And this helm station has got the main engine controls as well as the bow thruster if needed. Moving further forward, you'll see that the flybridge is all enclosed. And you've got spacious seating here for family and friends. As well as one of the most comfortable captain seats I've ever sat on. Not to mention a view. It's almost panoramic in nature. There's a wide array of electronics from the main helm position. This includes a 72 mile Furuno radar. We have got a Naughty Comp chart plotter. We've got a Garmin GPS. There's two VHF radios. There's a Teleflex autopilot. 
and there's a Fruno fish finder. You've got the controls for the spotlights overhead and the full bank of engine controls as well. If we look at the interior, starting in the forward cabin, this has been typically the crew cabin, although it's very comfortable in nature. Um, there is three berths in here. There's a crew heads area. And as you can see, there's plenty of storage throughout, including a full locker space. And there's also a ladder to an overhead hatch, um, should you need it in an emergency. As we head further astern, down the corridor, you come across the twin guest cabin. As you can see, this is fitted out to a very high standard. You can see there's storage underneath each bed, there's drawers, there's mirror doors here, and when you open those up, you get a full hanging locker space with shelves above. And there's more drawers to the side here as well, allowing you to plan for extended cruising rather than just short day trips. And opposite this cabin is the guest head compartment which like everywhere else has got storage throughout and then we've got a few steps up as we head further astern and this is where you get the galley and you've got the fridge and freezer you got the dishwasher you got a microwave you got a toaster you got everything from home you even have a washer and dryer stored underneath. And then over here, you've got cabinets. Keep your different food and groceries. You've got the electric top. And the extraction fan. More storage over here. There's storage down at the bottom as well. And then there's a casual dining area. Again, the storage under each bench seat. Before taking a few steps up to a more formal dining area. A seating for six here. A chandelier hanging over the top. And you get panoramic views throughout. Which you've got blinds here which you can close to keep the light out. If you wanted to. Or you can open them up and enjoy the view. And as you can see as we move around, there's plenty of natural light, but there's also plenty of artificial light. And this door over here is actually how you get to the engine room. We're going to continue walking through the boat before going down into the engine room. But that's where that one is located more steps up as we head aft. This takes you into the main saloon. It's a very comfortable area in both director chairs and also leather city. I really like the lamps that's on here, the nautical vibe to it. And there's a door to each side to get out into the passageway. And then it's through the saloon. You get downstairs to the aft cabin. And there's even storage in this stairway. And then this is the owner's stateroom. You could easily spend permanently on here if you wanted to. This could be a liveaboard if that's what you wanted. You get storage on either side with all the different cabinets. You get the owner's aft ensuite facilities. You get toilet, shower. And when last were you on a boat where you actually had a walk-in closet? This is the first I've ever seen of a boat of this size where you literally have a walk-in closet. And the mirror helps give it a more spacious feel to it. And then if we go back into the engine room this boat is powered by twin Detroit diesel engines. They're 1271 TIs. And unlike most Huckins, this is actually direct drive. They don't have V drive units. And these engines are 650 horsepower apiece, giving a cruising speed of 18 knots and a maximum speed of 22 knots. There's 400 gallon water capacity. 
1800 gallons of fuel and there's a range of approximately 800 miles it's really impressive how well the owner's got this engine room organized i'd always recommend that you get uh, engines to be inspected before purchasing a boat but if you notice there's very very clean areas throughout there's no signs of oil transmission fluid water anything along those lines everything's clearly labeled we even have a workbench area here so if you do have to carry out any repairs or servicing it's a very easy area to work on i'd like to thank everybody again for taking the time to watch this video i'd appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel as i mentioned earlier we've got more videos coming soon and you might also want to check out some of the ones we've already shot previously. Thanks.